for a quarterback to be better in fantasy in real life, particularly if they are a rushing threat. So Jalen Hurts is kind of like a fantasy superstar already, but we know in real life, you know, he's not anywhere close to that proven. What have you seen person? What have you like just with your own eyes seen out of Jalen Hurts this summer? And do you think there'll be enough improvement from Hurts to kind of open up this passing attack this season? Yeah, that's really the the biggest question about the Eagles in general. Uh, he's still going to have that running ability. It's going to be there. And I think in these practices during training camp, you kind of forget about it a little bit because it, it's not really conducive to, to showing that off. That'll be there. He has to improve as a passer. And a lot of it will be helped by A.J. Brown. Uh, joining him in Philly. And, you know, I think the one thing where Hertz really has to improve is not just accuracy. I feel like that's too big of an umbrella, but it's really his ability to throw with anticipation uh, and get the ball out on time. And there have been moments where, you know, in his career where that just hasn't been the case. And there's a big difference. You know, if he's if he's throwing a slant, it, there's a big difference to throwing it on the numbers or throwing it to a spot where he can lead the receiver and they can pick up some yak. And I think that's kind of the next step in his development. We've seen some good signs with A.J. Brown, who really is like the type of receiver they needed to round out this group because they had Devontae Smith, who's a great route runner, really smooth, and they had Quez Watkins, who's the 4-3 guy. Uh, but A.J. Brown is a nice mixture of all that. He's a fast guy, but big body, has the ability to win 50-50 balls, and in the middle of the field can give them a weapon because they, if you kind of look at those spray charts – uh, from last year, not a lot of activity in the middle of the field, most of it to the right side. Uh, so having a player like A.J. Brown should open up a little bit more of the field. We'll ask you a little bit more about A.J. Brown in a minute, but then with Hurts, so we, we spent a lot of time talking about his passing, and that's just kind of like the obsessive focus because we kind of just take his rushing for granted. But, you know, he got banged up late last season. He's the classic, taking a lot of hits. Do you think might, there might be any change in Jalen Hurts' rushing usage the season or are the legs, the rushing just too valuable for the Eagles to really consider that. You know what the funny thing is like last year, they started the season with a ton of read option and there are even some RPOs in the mix and they kind of took that out of the offense and the rushing didn't struggle. So I think that's going to be there. And even if they're not, if, if they don't kind of put in those uh, design quarterback runs there, he's still going to pick up yards on off schedule plays Mm-hmm. Uh, that's not going anywhere. Is he going to score 10 touchdowns on the game? Yes. Again? I mean, probably yes. not. Oh, no, my wrong answer. Got no. it. That's not what fantasy managers, you've just been canceled but by I, I fantasy managers. The passing touchdowns are going to improve. I think there's that's going to balance out a little bit. I don't think 10 rushing touchdowns is sustainable, but I also think 16 passing touchdowns is too low. So I, I overall, I think the touchdown numbers might go up. I just getting 10 rushing touchdowns as a quarterback is an awful lot. And there, we'll talk about Miles Sanders. I'm sure he didn't have any rushing touchdowns last year. It's hard for me to think that that's going to happen again. So I, I think we're going to see a little bit more balance out of that offense in terms of where the touchdowns come from. It would be incredible if Miles Sanders did not uh, add to that total. Uh, this year. <laughs> would be quite. He seems like the kind of player that might challenge. Except that I, I really, really hope he does not. Let's hope. Let's hope not. So uh, getting back to AJ Brown for just a moment, Dave drawing rave reviews. I saw a tweet today uh, that said that uh, he could see quote 11 billion targets uh, <laughs> this year. Uh, so <laughs> I think there's been a, a comparison, uh, but several people both in like real and fantasy world about Jalen hurts as a passer coming into his third season and, and some of the parallels for Josh Allen's third season, not Uh-oh. saying he's, he's going to, not saying he's going to make that jump, <laughs> that kind of jump, but, but, the Bills, they were very run heavy on, in, in Josh Allen's first two years. They brought in Stefan Diggs. They shifted offensive philosophy. Now the Eagles have brought in A.J. Brown, who is, you know, c- clearly an alpha wide receiver one in any offense. Do you see that sort of shift coming to this philosophical shift coming to the Philadelphia offense? In a way, you know, last year they were the 25th ranked passing offense in the league. And you can win like that, right? But it's a lot harder. And I think they realize that they just have to be better as a passing. They wanted to be that last year and kind of out of necessity, they shifted away from it and they became a run heavy team because they had this great offensive line and they figured, all right, we have some running backs who can do it. And we have this quarterback who's able to do it. But I think they, after the season, they looked at it and said, look, our best chance 
to be successful long term is to be a better passing offense. And I think that's expected. But the funny thing is they've really added one starter on that side of the ball. And it's right. AJ Brown. Everyone else is pretty much the same. You bring back the same quarterback. You bring back the same group of running backs. The offensive line has changed a little bit, but it's still very good. One of the best in the league. They have Dallas Goddard, who was here last year as their number one tight end. The thing that's changed is they have AJ Brown. So it kind of tells you how much of their improvement or expected improvement in the passing game really just comes down to his presence and it shouldn't be overstated. I mean, it, 11 billion, I would take the under on that. <laughs> uh, it, he's getting targeted an awful lot in training camp and uh, Devonte Smith's been a little banged up, but even before Smith had missed practice, most of the targets were going to AJ Brown. And I don't think that's a coincidence. With, so you talked about Jalen kind of like the next step in his passing game being like improving his anticipation. I mean, AJ Brown is one of the most like dynamic after the catch receivers in the entire league. Have you seen that being an emphasis? Um, just trying to get AJ Brown in space, trying to get him where he can have a head 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 of steam, or is he being used that way or more conventionally? Just how has he been, been been being used in camp? Yeah, no, it's a very good. It's funny. I'm actually writing a story right now about AJ Brown and his yak. Uh, he's very good at it. Obviously, he's like 230 pounds, strong hands. Uh, runs through every catch. So they're he's like a bigger out. Percy Harvin. Like he is. He, yeah, yeah I can kind of see that. There, there aren't many guys who fit that profile. Um, you know, Debo's kind of a unicorn in a lot of ways, but uh, a lot of the similar size, speed, uh, you know, correlation as AJ Brown, just a big guy who's very fast. And in order to, to get the most out of him, you need those plays to be in rhythm. And that has been encouraging. We've seen a lot of, you know, a slant, just a slant being on time means so much to what they want to do offensively. And, you know, Nick Sirianni always talks about uh, explosive plays. And I think it's really important to remember that explosive plays in, in the past game don't mean chucking the ball 30, 40 yards downfield in this offense. They love slants. They love crossers. They love to be able to get the ball on a, completable pass an easy pass get it in your receiver's hands and then let them do the rest and uh, it's going to be a big part of this team i think and you know that he he looks back to his time really even before he was in indianapolis with frank reich when he was in uh san diego um back in the day with like tyrell williams who's a super speedy guy but they made their money on the crossers it was him kind of dragging across the field hitting him in rhythm and letting him do the rest. So I think that's going to be a big part of what they try to do. So obviously it's kind of like spoiler alert, AJ Brown will be a big part of the offense. Yeah. Um, but like behind AJ Brown. So again, we're talking about this offense, at least for fantasy purposes, hopefully becoming more pass heavy, creating more targets. Cause there's a lot of talented guys, but I mean, so we know AJ Brown though is going to be, he was acquired to be the alpha, the clear cut wide receiver one, with guys like Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard as secondary pass catchers, and will probably still be, you know, a run first offense, even if it's more pass heavy. Do you see, like, this is like kind of like a pure statistical question. I mean, do you see them getting enough looks to produce numbers that will satisfy fantasy managers? I mean, the kind of thing where this like, you know, so a lot of three catch games from Devontae Smith, you know, a lot of three catch games from Dallas Goddard, or do you think they can kind of more, consistently kind of stuff the box score this year. Yeah, it's it's it might be tricky at times this year because it, if teams are going to really kind of shade coverage to A.J. Brown, the Eagles feel like they have the other pass catchers to get involved. And it kind of starts with Devontae and, and Dallas Goddard. I feel more confident about Dallas Goddard having a very consistent high production season because – uh, you looked at his production last year after the Zach Ertz trade. You really have to break it down because early last season, they were in this weird situation where no one thought Zach Ertz was going to be here. It was kind of weird. And then that was, that was one of the weirdest. I haven't thought about it in a while. That was, it was a weird very strange. summer. No one vibe. thought he was going to be here. And then week one comes and he's on the team and you go, all right, well, they're going to have to run 12 personnel. And, they're you know, it was it was kind of weird and disjointed. But once that trade happened, Dallas Goddard became tight end one. Uh, he was on a thousand yard pace, so he was much better after that. And he's looked very good in camp. He has a, a real connection with Jalen Hurts. So if AJ Brown is one in terms of targets we've seen, 
this summer, Dallas Goddard's 1A. I mean, he's he's gotten a ton of looks. Uh, Devontae Smith could end up being the, the odd man out here if you're talking in terms of targets. And he's a really talented player. Uh, and they, they want to run the offense through those three guys. It's just you start to break down the numbers and you think, oh, he's at the, there's a thousand yard season. There's a, there's not going to be that many yards. I mean, it, what's the, the over under on Jalen Hurts passing yards? You know, they got, you have to figure out where they're coming from. And then even after that, I mean, Quez Watkins, who is a pretty talented third receiver, had over 600 yards last year. Probably not going to be able to do that again, just if everyone stays healthy in front of them. It's not. It's not the Oprah meme where you get a thousand yards, you get a thousand <laughs> yards. Hey, everybody gets. You start, and it's funny because you start talking about these players, and you have a lot of confidence in them. And even Zach Pascal as a four is a pretty good four, but the the numbers that they could put up if you do that, and then you add them up, you go, well, Jalen's not throwing for six thousand yards. It's that's not the way any of this works. So uh, I, I, there are going to be games where one of those guys just doesn't produce and it they could end up being a pretty frustrating team from a fantasy perspective because of it 